This is the lecture on statistics used in assessment in special education. It's part three of the lecture. My name is Dr. George Giuliani from Hofstra University. And so far in the lecture, we've discussed the mean, the median, the mode, and the range. Uh, and within that, we've also discussed frequency distributions. And now we go on to a very important concept that you need to understand, and that is standard deviation. Standard deviation. Um, let's look at the following two distribution of scores on a 50 question spelling test to really get a, a good idea of what we're talking about with standard deviation. Suppose we had two groups of students, group A and group B. Okay, and they're taking a 50 question spelling test, a pretest, to see how many words do they know uh, as they enter into the third grade. And let's suppose in group A, the students scored as followed. They got 28 out of 50. 29 out of 50, 30 out of 50, 31 out of 50, and 32 out of 50. So the five students in group A got scores of 28, 29, 30, 31, and 32. Now we look at group B. And the five students in group B got scores as, file, uh, as follows. Uh, they got a score of 10, 20, 30, 40 and 50. So student 1 got a score of 10, student 2 got a score of 20, student 3 student, uh, score of 30, 40, and then 50 for student 5. Okay, so we've got two groups, group A and group B. The five students in group A got 28, 29, 30, and 31, and the five students in group B, 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. I ask you to calculate the mean for group A and group B. So take a second and put this lecture on pause and calculate the mean for group A and the mean for group B. Now when you calculate the mean for group A, you find that the mean is 30. And if you calculate the mean for group B, you also find that the mean is 30. So both groups have means of 30. And if you knew nothing about these two groups, you might think they actually look similar if you didn't know anything about these groups. If a person saw that group A had a mean of 30 and group B had a mean of 30 and knew nothing about the groups, you might think, oh, they did about the same. But we know that that is not true whatsoever. In group A, we had scores of 28, 29, 30, 31, and 32, while in group B, we had scores of 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. In a sense, the spread of the scores around the mean of 30 in group A, 28 to 32, is much tighter, is much smaller than how the scores were spread around the mean in group B, 10 up to 50. So when you look at group A and you look at the spread of scores around the mean, 30, as opposed to the spread of scores around the mean in group B, uh, which is 10 up to 50, you would see that the spread of scores around group A is much smaller than the spread of scores around group B. And we have a statistic that describes for us the spread of scores around the mean. How are scores spread around the mean? And that is known as the standard deviation. Standard deviation is the spread of scores around the mean. And it's a very important statistical concept when doing assessment in special education. Now, the way in which standard deviations are going to be shown, what we're going to be using them for, is under what we call the normal curve, the normal curve. And a normal curve, a normal distribution, hypothetically represents the way test scores would fall if a particular test is given to every single student of the same age or grade in the population for which the test would, uh, was designed. Now you've probably seen the normal curve, the way in which the normal curve is laid out. And standard deviation will play a very important role in the normal curve. The normal curve, which is also referred to as the bell curve, is going to tell us many important facts about test scores and the population. Now, the beauty of the normal curve is that it never changes. Um, and so as students, this is great for you because once you memorize it, it will never change on you. And you do have to memorize it. It's, a, it's, it's something you'll be using throughout your entire academic and professional career. So again, the normal curve, the bell curve, is going to tell us many different important facts. It's never going to change on you. You do have to memorize it, but the great thing about the normal curve is that once you know it, once you have learned it, then, and uh, once you have it, you're all set. At that point, it will never change on you, not now, not a year from now, not 10 years from now. Now, what I need you to do is to view the normal curve in your textbook and follow along with the lecture. Uh, the curve can be found in the chapter titled Basic, uh, Basic Statistical Concepts. 
uh, for the fourth edition of the Perangelo and Giuliani textbook. Uh, it's in chapter three on page 47. So I'll ask that you take out uh, the normal curve uh, copy that you have. Uh, if I've given you a copy of it, please pull it out. It's in your textbook. If you're not using the Perangelo and Giuliani textbook at this time, the 2012 one, uh, there is a normal curve in your text. So wherever it is that you have your normal curve, take it out at this point. Now let's take a look at this normal curve that you have in front of you. When you look at the normal curve, looking at the figure of the normal curve, you can see that 34% of the scores lie between the mean and one standard deviation above the mean. And an equal proportion of scores, 34%, lie between the mean and one standard deviation below the mean. So when you look at the normal curve, look at the mean and then one standard deviation above the mean and you'll see 34% of the scores. And if you look at the mean and one standard deviation below the mean, you'll also see 34% of the scores. So what you can see is that approximately 68% of the scores lie within one standard deviation of the mean. 34% plus 34% is 68%. Now what you can also see is that 13.5% of the scores lie between one and two standard deviations above the mean and between one and two standard deviations below the mean. So find on the curve one standard deviation above the mean and find on the curve two standard deviations above the mean. And when you look in between that, uh, between those, you'll find that 13.5% of the scores fall there. And you'll see it on the other end too, between minus one standard deviation and minus two standard deviations. And when you add up all those percentages, 13.5% and then the 34% and then the 34% and the 13.5%, you will see that 95% of all scores fall between two standard deviations below the mean and two standard deviations above the mean. Now, how does this help you? How does all of this help you? And what we'll do is we'll pull the lecture up here, stop part three of the lecture now, and we'll go to part four of statistics used in assessment in special education, where we'll talk about the importance of the normal curve and its relevancy. So this ends the lecture uh, on uh, regarding part three of statistics used in assessment in special education. Go on now to part four.